the best of the week on Relevant Radio. All right, here we go. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Marriage Unhindered. I'm your host, Doug Hinder, licensed marriage and family therapist. Here talking about all things marriage related. Listen, you know, all marriages struggle at some time. Uh, Some struggle more than others, of course, but every marriage has its ups and downs. And, you know, we're all victims of original sin. And, you know, we have our current weaknesses and, and our current sins and our defects, right? Marriage is hard work because, you know, we're, we're, we have defects, we have weaknesses. In my experience, you know, most married couples would benefit from some sort of marriage tune-up or retreat or some program designed to help them get out of their rut and connect at a deeper, more intimate level. Problem is, most couples wait until there's real trouble before they make a real investment in their marriage. And that's, sadly, some wait too long and they're not able to pull it out of the fire, right? So, you know, it listen, it makes perfect sense to take your car in for periodic maintenance. Well, why don't we do the same for our marriages? Well, one of the best and most widely attended marriage programs around is Retrovi. And I have the good fortune today of being joined in the studio by two Retrovi coordinators and friends, Carol and P. Tomaselli, who are going to share their story and tell us more about Retrovi. And I, you know, I'm often asked by people, do I recommend Retrovi? And I'm like, yes, but I don't know a lot about it. So I'm going to learn a lot here today as well. So then when I recommend the program, I can do it and say, yeah, because I actually know something about it. Pete and Carol, welcome to the show. Our pleasure to be Great here. Great to be here with you, Doug. Yeah, thanks, Doug. I, uh, I, I'm really excited about this. And, and Carol, I, I think you and I first met a number of years ago downtown at a morning talk that Father Peter Armenio was giving, and you're talking about Retro Vi, and I was interested, and, and we just were never able to get connected. We bumped into each other now a couple months ago, and I'm like, we gotta, we gotta get you on the show. So listen, I, let me just, I mean, I'm just gonna toss you the softball first. What is Retro Vi? Tell me what it is. Retro Vi came out of Marriage Encounter. So Marriage Encounter is a program that I think a lot of people are really aware of. It's yeah. come through the Catholic Church. And one of the things that they were discovering was that there were some people that maybe were not in a place that they were just trying to improve their marriage. They were in deep trouble. Mm. And so Retrovi is a program that began in the 70s in Canada. And then it just kind of branched off into different communities so that it's now all over the world as Marriage Encounter is. Wow. Wow. And it's a weekend? Tell me about the... So it's like a three-pronged approach. Okay. So there's a weekend program, and then there are post-sessions, which is something I think might be different than Marriage Encounter. And then we have monthly meetings. And so between, you know, learning the communication tools on the weekend and then learning like the conflict management tool during the post session. It's kind of like we use the example of continuing education for your profession. Mm -hmm. And we had all kinds of CE, you know, the continuing ed credits for the profession, but Mm -hmm. none for our marriage. Yeah. And so when you go to Retrovi, it's essentially, you know, like you were talking about. Right. Because I know you talk about the different stages of marriage, but in Retrovi, we call it romance, disillusionment, misery, and awakening. I, and I, you know what? I love that because most people will say there's just one stage in marriage. It's the romance. And when that's gone, that means the marriage is still over and I need to replace you with someone else who I yeah. have more romance with, right? Yeah. So I love the concept of the four. So, I mean, I think we all understand what the romance thing is. There's a lot of infatuation there. This is the thing that leads you to the altar. This is the kind of the starry-eyed thing, right? This we're going to live happily ever after. This is all the fairy tale stuff. We'll never have a problem. We'll never have a problem, <laughs> right? Right. You know, it's yeah, right. I, you know, I've got a son who just got married a week and a half ago, and I, it's it's so much fun to see this the, the young innocent love that they have, and you know, they're kind of like, yeah, this we're going to be like this forever. It's like. Yeah, <laughs> right. You're not. Yeah, right up until the time the dog makes a mess in the kitchen, <laughs> then you might have a conflict, right? So the next stage is disillusionment, right? So t- t- tell me about that a little bit. That's interesting. Well, Carol always has a nice way of describing disillusionment in such a way as it's those little things that you know you used to find cute that are really have become really annoying now. <laughs> right. you know? yeah. Like that little yeah. sound you make that I saw, oh, isn't yeah. that, that's something, isn't it a cute little sound? You, you, you'd be like, yeah. you know, if I hear that sound one more time, <laughs> it's, it's gonna, this is going to be over. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that disillusionment so, stage, but that kind of, that's, that's like, you know, water 
eroding a stone, you yeah. know, drop by drop. So that so that's when kind of reality sets in. That I have married a, an actual human being, not a god or a goddess, right? So I've married somebody who's not perfect, um, and whose defects will get on my nerves from time to time, right? And yeah. now all of a sudden I got to get about the hard work of navigating life with someone who's not perfect. Yeah, and I think that's why God set it up this way, right? So the the whole romance thing is first and the starry eyed thing, because if you were if you just got dropped into reality right away, nobody'd get married. You're like, oh man, that's <laughs> but once you've captured my heart, now I'm in it, right? And now I've I've kind of got the energy and the desire to make this thing work and because I know how much I love you and I know how beautiful you are, even though I've now discovered you also have a couple of warts. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you've spoken before about um, like a two-year mark where, you know, yeah. like an infatuation kind of lasts for that two years and, and you have to try to make it past that, you yeah. know. And that's kind of the uh, the disillusionment zone is when, when those things kind of hit. And it doesn't – it's not always a, a – you know, chronologically significant from a standpoint of like at this point, you know, now you can expect this, but yeah. but don't be surprised if uh, if you end up you know knee deep in it at a particular point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and opposites attract. At the beginning, it's oh. very exciting that he's so much different than me, right? <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. you know that's where disillusionment and those yeah. defects are unbelievable. And then of course we only fixate on what our spouse's defects are, yeah, and yeah. not necessarily seeing what ours might be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> disillusionment yeah, yeah. then can very easily move towards the misery when yeah. it goes pushed under the rug and set aside. And then there becomes this like roommate kind of yeah. scenario. Right. So I'm becoming disillusioned. And, and if I don't know how to talk about it, right, or if I bring it up in ways that irritate you, so it always ends up in a fight as opposed to a solution, that's right? right. The illusion, the, the disillusionment continues to grow. And then all of a sudden I wake up one day and I'm just kind of miserable. Yeah. And you're beginning to kind of veer apart. And so when you think about like two parallel lines that are running next to each other, and then when, when it's just off by one degree, one of those lines is off by one degree and you look on the horizon and they seem like you can't even see both lines together yeah. anymore in your, in your line of sight. I love that. Yeah. That's um, a good picture. And, and that's, you know that's kind of what happens, and and in retrovi parlance, there's a lot of a lot of things that we discuss, and one of them, you know, you talk about family of origin and things like that. But one of the things that they talk about in retrovi is something called the married singles lifestyle, and I don't want to give away too much because we want couples to come yeah, and learn sure. about it at a weekend. But it could be things like volunteering at the church, you know, so, something that you know that's really. Uh, intended to have a, a good outcome, and and you you've got the best interests of somebody at heart. Yeah, it just might not be your spouse, right? You know, and and when you're inundated in those things, and you're and you're just over occupied with them, you start to lead those parallel lifestyles, and then you start to see the drifting taking place. Right. Yeah. You you, you take your eye off the most important thing yeah. in your life, yes. which is your spouse. Yes. And I, I had a, a couple that I had worked with. It was during COVID, I guess. The wife had had two affairs. And the husband was so uh, cool about that. He said, listen, Doug, I'm partly to blame for my wife's affairs. I'm like, really? Talk to me about that. And he said, you know what? He said, listen, I played college football. And he said, I know that as an athlete, if I take my eye off the ball, I'm going to drop it. And he said, I was taking care of everybody but my wife. He said, you know, I was working hard at work trying to make some money to build a good standard of living for my family. I was coaching my kids' at sports teams. I'm on two committees down at the parish. I'm taking care of everybody but her, and I left her lonely, and I left her vulnerable. And I tell you what, I mean, I was so edified, and that guy, I mean, he owned it. He said, I, I got to change. She's got to change, too. We got to stop that behavior. But I got to do things different, too, in this yeah. marriage. She's not 100% responsible for this. I got my piece of it. And they did. They, they pulled it together. It didn't take too long. I, there was a lot of raw emotion there were a lot of yelling and cussing and swearing and crying and but they they pulled it together well, you know introspection is so important in any kind yeah. of uh, any kind of resolution like that and that was clearly a gentleman who understood his complicity in yeah. the in the demise of the marriage and 
And that's important. And yep. that's, that's important with Retrovi, you know, that you own what your side of the, uh, you, know, you know, you own what your issue is. Yeah. You know, Carol talks about keeping your side of the street clean. And, yeah. and I always talk about like in my work, I talk about staying in your lane, you know, like, yeah. like don't, yeah. you know, yeah. do what you can do, but don't get in trouble doing what you can't. You know, yeah. marriage is just so s- analogous to everything that goes on in life, mm-hmm. you know, and, and mm-hmm. because life is tough and messy and yeah. uh, unpredictable, unfortunately, sometimes marriage becomes the same. It does. Yeah. So I think, right. So that, that when you get to that misery point, is your experience that where a lot of couples decide to pull the plug and say, I'm miserable and I'm moving on? Well, the interesting part that I learned was that like, if you end your relationship in disillusionment or misery, mm-hmm. you have like an 85% chance of repeating it in the next relationship. Is that right? And the crazy part is that's the statistic is me because mm. I was married and divorced at 22. Oh, oh I wow. wasn't old, okay. but I didn't even, I didn't even go to a Catholic. I wasn't Catholic at the time, uh-huh. but the Catholic church actually honored that marriage that I had. So mm-hmm. I had to go through the annulment process, which was very healing. And then here I was again in a challenging marriage. And so I needed to, (laughs) (laughs) yeah, I wanted to be part of that. Yeah. Yeah, Thanks so much. (laughs) Well, I did at least come into the Catholic church. So that was the best part of no small feat. No small accomplishment. Yeah. Yes. So, So, right. Right. So that's interesting, right? If so, if you end the marriage during disillusionment or misery, you're going to, you got a big chance of repeating the mistake because you haven't learned your lesson. And I've blamed you for all of my problems. And guess what? The so. common denominator was me. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I, you know, came to terms with that. And so when I found Retrovi, I was so curious. I read about the four stages and this awakening. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what is that? I've never heard of the awakening stage. And so that's how I kind of signed up. You know, he didn't want to go um, at the <laughs> beginning. It took a no. bit. but. My hunch is that's more the norm, where the wife wants to go and the husband comes up. Not always, but, it goes, both but, ways. but a lot of times it it's ways. one or the other. Yeah, yeah usually one of them is like, I'm not It's not, not always it. like, like a unanimous decision of two. Yeah. It is. Sometimes it is. I mean, I talked with somebody today, yeah. and it sounded like both of them, they were just going to hope that they could find babysitting. Okay. You know, because they had a couple small kids, and yeah. it is really challenging those early years of marriage when it the is. kids are and you small. You talked about that yesterday, when one person is not willing to to change yeah. or not willing to forgive or not willing to anything, that that's a recipe for disaster and yeah. for failure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it worked in our situation because I really like started praying and, you know, just asking our Lord to help out. And if yeah. we keep that right order of God, yeah. spouse, yeah. Funny and how then works. kids, yeah. it is a much better, it's a much better way. God right. has a better plan always. So <laughs> I, was, yeah. I, was a, I remember thinking that I was a little bit angered because before we went to Retrovi, I was first in the marriage. I was the I was God. That mm. was where the hierarchy was going. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was Pete, <laughs> and then it was whatever, yeah. and or and the kids maybe. Or, and and I remember like thinking in a, in a prayerful kind of a situation, like I really blew this. God, I had I had mm. the number one position for for the Lord, oh. right and I'm <laughs> never going to be there again. Yeah. You know? yeah. And I and I was for a little period of time, I was regretful of that. You know, yeah. which was early on in the in my spiritual recovery. Okay. Um, I don't know that I've ever even spoken about that or admitted that to to anybody. But you know, <laughs> when I finally realized that I could not be first. God had to be first. Yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. Uh, I mean, that was, that was life-changing and marriage-changing. So, and that's, that, that's my theory, and I, I hope to write a book about it someday. But, but to me, the, the core reason for most of the marriages that fall apart is just selfishness. Yeah, Absolutely. I'm first and you're second. So your job is to make me happy. And as long as you're doing that, we're going to be just fine, right? And if you think the same thing, that my job is to make you happy, right? Now we got a problem, right? Right? It's, it's this, this selfishness thing. So yeah. this awakening to joy. So, Carol, is this 
is this kind of like a, a lightning bolt moment or is it a slow awakening or is it different for every couple? How to talk a little bit more about that awakening. What's that? How well, does that I think it's probably a slow process. It might be a lightning bolt for some. Um, it's but probably different for everybody. It, is, it yeah. is different for everybody. And then, of course, you know, we're human. So some days are like, oh, total joy. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. in like major awakening. And then all of a sudden, you know, that little habit comes back. And, yeah. You know, but the... Um, Good news is that being involved in Retrovalue and staying in this program and continuing yeah. with our monthly meetings, you know, we have like a support system that we won't last okay. long in, in, yeah. in a problem. So, This entire episode of Marriage Unhindered is on the updated Relevant Radio app. The Relevant Radio app is completely free and updated daily with fresh articles, podcasts, and prayers.